Okay, so, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Myla Kiamanyuba, first year college, taking up Bachelor of Secondary Education, majoring English. So, I am here now to report or to discuss my topic for this subject, language, culture, and society. So, our topic for today is all about subject and verb complement. So, I know that you are already familiar on this topic, but for now, let us review or recapitulate for us to understand more and deeply about this. So, this topic is one of the most important thing to know because it can give us a learning or knowledge on how to speak English grammatically as well. Because we know that we can speak English, but we cannot assure that our grammar is correct, right? So, now... We must understand totally what is the agreement of the subject and verb in a sentence. So, let's start to tackle this. Subject and verb agreement. Subject and verb have one matching feature as well, their number. Number is the term used to indicate whether a noun or pronoun is singular or plural. Singular indicates one, and plural indicates more than one. So, meaning, the number of subjects and verbs is the most important thing to identify in a sentence to know that they must agree to each other. Number is the term used to indicate whether a noun or pronoun is singular or plural. Ang number na tinutukoy dyan ay ang singular or plural. Ginagamit yan upang matukoy kung ang pronoun o ang noun is singular or plural. A verb must agree with its subject in number. So, meaning to say, if the subject's number is singular, a verb must be a singular. Or if the number of the subject is plural, a verb must be a Plural. So that's the agreement of the verb and the subject in the sentence. The plural of most noun is formed by adding s or es to the singular form. A few nouns, however, form their plural irregularly. For example, man is the plural of man. Certain pronouns form their plural by changing form. Okay, meaning to say, um, not all the nouns adding by S or ES in the end of each singular form to make it plural form. There are nouns called an irregular, which means a noun with changing forms when we transform the singular forms noun into a plural forms. For example, men. Is the plural of man so um, it changing a form they change in forms so man is what we call an irregular noun okay and the pronouns are changing forms when we make a plural form meaning when we make a plural pronouns forms okay so here are some example of a singular and plural forms of nouns and pronouns. So, as we can see, the given singular forms of nouns are diamond, bus, and child. And their plural forms are diamonds, buses, children. Mapapansin natin na ang child is an irregular noun kasi nga it changed by its form pagdating sa Plural. Okay. Um, so, also in a pronoun. Sa pronoun naman, um, the singular pronoun is I, she, he, it. Um, the plural pronoun naman is we and they. So, um, they are changing in forms. Okay. So, next. Present tense verbs also have singular and 
plural forms. The third person singular ends in s or as. Most plural forms of verb do not end in s or as. So, meaning to say, if you are talking a verb in a present tense, the singular forms of verb is adding or ends with s or as when we are using the third person. And mostly, the plural forms of verbs not ends in s or es. Okay. For example, in a third person singular, he, she, it wants. And in a plural forms verb, I, you, we, they, run. So as we can see, the action verb runs in a singular third person is ending in s, while in plural while in plural form is not. And note, I and you agree with plural form of run. Why? Because I and you is although a singular, but they are not a third person. You is maybe a singular or plural. Depend on the sentence. Depends the sentence. Okay. In the following box are the singular and plural forms of the irregular verbs be, have, and do in the present tense and be in the past tense. Notice that be has irregular forms for both the singular and plural in the past tense as well. Okay, so let's see. So these are the singular and plural forms of be, have, and do in the present tense. So let us read for let us read first. Okay. Um, in a singular, I am, I have, I do. You are, you have, you do. And he, she, it is, has, does. Okay. So in a plural noun is we, are, have, do. You are, have, do. They are, have, do. So, as we can see, the I am. Am is the singular form of verb be in the present tense. Am is only put after a pronoun or a subject I. Okay, so how about in a pronoun you? It is agree both singular and plural forms of be, have, and do, just like in I, okay? Except in am. Sa I, eg, um, except lang sa am, okay? While in the third person, he, she, and it is only is, has, and does can agree on them. Okay, so that's in the present tense. Let's proceed on the past tense. Um, as we can see, the I, he, she, and it are the same with the singular and are the same with the irregular form of be, was. Was is agree on a subject I. She, he, and it, while you is the same with the plural forms. Okay? Since a subject and a verb both have number, they must agree in a sentence. A singular subject takes a singular verb. A plural subject takes a plural verb. So, ibig sabihin, kapag ang subject is singular, Ang verb nito ay dapat singular din. At kapag naman ang subject natin is plural, dapat ang verb din na gagamitin na sa sentence ay plural din. Okay, so let us so let us see the some example on how using verb based on the agreement of the um, verb into the subject. Okay, or on how the verb agrees on the subject. Okay. So, the first example is 
the diamond sparkles. So as we can see, the singular verb sparkles agrees on the singular verb, singular noun or singular subject na diamond. Okay. So sa plural naman is the diamond sparkle. So the plural um verb na sparkle is agrees agrees on the singular subject or agrees on the plural subject diamonds. Okay? So in the second um example, the school bus is late. So um is is a singular verb. And the bus is a singular subject. So is is agrees on the singular subject bus. How about in its plural? So um, all school buses are late. Okay. So our uh, um, verb is are. So are agrees on the plural subject buses. Okay. In our third example, the child was here. So was agrees on the singular subject child because was is the singular verb in the past tense. Okay. How about in its um, plural? The children were here. Okay, so our verb here is were. So were is agrees on the plural subject children. Okay, so the last example is he has my books. So our verb is has. Has agrees on our subject he. Okay, so in a plural naman is they have my books. So our verb is have. So have agrees on our plural subject they. Okay. So um, that's um, the example of how we use um, verb and subject that agrees on each other in a sentence. Be, have, and do are also often used as helping verbs when they are they must agree in number with the subject. The helping verb must agree in number with its subject. So, ibig sabihin, ang, ang helping verb ay dapat mag-agree din dun sa kung ano yung number ng subject natin. Um, ang mga ang tinatawag ng mga helping verbs is yan yung mga be, have, and do. Yung mga is, are, was, were. Yan yung mga helping verbs. Tinatawag din silang linking verb. Okay. So let us see the some example of it. The first example is Rob is making a spaghetti dinner. So in our first example our subject is verb and then our verb is is so is is a singular verb so is agrees on a singular subject okay so next example is the men have been waiting so our verb is have and then our subject is men men is the plural form of man so men is the is the um, plural subject so and the, and also have is a plural verb so have agrees on our plural subject men okay and the third um, example is Mary Ellen has finished her homework so Mary Ellen consider as a third person kaya ang has is agrees on the subject Mary Ellen Okay, so the last example is the girls are practicing their dance routines. So our subject is, girl, is, is girls. Girls, the number of our subject is plural. 
So, um, dapat ang verb natin is plural din. So, that's why R agrees on the subject girls. Okay. So, that's it. So, let's proceed naman to the interrupting words. What Interrupting words. Agreement between a subject and verb is usually easy to recognize when the subject and the verb are side by side. Many times, however, a press or a close will come between a subject and a verb. Then a mistake in agreement sometimes occurs. The tendency is to make the verb agree with a, no with a word that is closest to it rather than with the subject. Okay. So, ang pinag-uusapan dito is ang interrupting words. Ang interrupting words ay yan yung mga clauses or presses na sunod sa subject natin. Na kung saan, um, dito tayo madalas nagkakamali sa paggamit ng ating verb. Okay. Kasi, instead na ang pag-focusan natin is yung um, subject natin is may tendency na ang na, nag um, may, may tendency na ang mas pinapansin natin yung closer sub, close, closet na word. At yun yung interrupting words. Um, the agreement of a verb with its subject is not changed by any interrupting words. So, Kahit anong interrupting words na gagamitin. So, hindi yun ang pagpopokusan natin, kundi ang subject. Okay? So, let's see some example. Notice that the subject and verb in the following example agree in number, regardless of the word that come between them. Okay. First one example is, the books on the second shelf are mine. So, the plural verb are agrees with the plural subject books, even though shelf is closer to the verb. So, our interrupting words dyan is the shelf. So, kailangan, hindi ta, huwag natin pansinin yung um, closer, sub, closer na phrase shelf or closer na word shelf kasi Doon natin, pa, ang papansinin natin ay ang subject natin na books. Kaya, ang verb natin is are. Kasi, ang subject natin is plural. Okay. So, the next example is, the planes circling the airport are waiting to land. So, are agrees with planes, not airport. Okay. So, the third um, example is, the students who must attend the main meeting are excused from third person. So, are agrees with student, not meeting. Okay? So, um, hope you learn more about of these interrupting words. Okay. So, next. Note. Occasionally, a parenthetical expression beginning with a word or words such as like, with, as well as, or including, will interrupting a subject and a verb. Do not make the verb agree with a word in a parenthetical expression. So, meaning to say, uh, may mga words na nag interrupt sa ating between the subject and the verb in a sentence. So, ang mga words na yan is like, with, as well as, or including. So, kapag makikita natin yung mga um, word na yan that interrupt on our um, subject and verb in a sentence, so, hindi yan ang papansinin natin, kundi mag-focus din tayo sa kung ano yung subject natin. So, for more understanding, um, let's see the, some, the one example here. So, for example, Mr. Taylor, as well as some other teachers, was mentioned into the article or in the article. So, Mr. Taylor is our subject. So, the interrupting words, John, is 
as well as. So, wag tayo mag-focus dyan, kundi sa subject natin na si Mr. Taylor. So, what the number of our subject? Singular. So, um, the verb must be a singular. So, ang verb natin is was. So, was agrees on the subject, Mr. Taylor. Okay. So, let us proceed to the compound subjects. There are two rules you should remember when making a verb agree with two or more subjects. So, first rule is when subjects are joined by or nor, either or, or neither nor, the verb agrees with the closer subject. Okay, ibig sabihin niyan, kapag ang mga salitang or, nor, either, or, or, neither, nor, is ginamit um, para i-connecta o i-ugnay yung compound subject natin sa isang sentence. So, um, ang pagpopokusan natin is kung ano yung closer subject or kung ano yung huling tinukoy na subject. So, Ang verb natin is mag-a-agree doon sa closer subject or kung ano yung huling tinukoy na subject. For example, either Douglas or Rico was present at the meeting. So, was agrees with the closer subject Rico. So, um, ang was is a singular form of the verb be in a past tense. Okay? So, was agrees with the closer subject Rico. So, ang closer subject natin or ang huling tinukoy na subject natin is Rico. Okay? So, even um, dalawa yung subject natin. So, um, hindi tayo magbabasi doon kasi gumamit tayo ng um, word na or. So, doon tayo magbabasi sa second or um, the closer subject na si Rico. Okay. So, in other um, example, pancakes or eggs are served daily. So, R agrees with the closer subject eggs. Okay. So, next. This rule applies even when one subject is singular and other subject is plural. So, ang rule na yun, ang first rule na to, is, um, na sinabi ko, is, um, ginagamit natin yan kapag ang um, dalawang subject natin is yung isa is singular at yung isa naman is plural. Okay. Um, like for example, the neither the moon nor the stars were visible behind the clouds. So, were agrees with the closer subject stars, even though moon is singular. Okay? Understand? Okay. So, let us proceed to the second rule. The second rule involving compound subject is based on the other conjunctions. Okay? So, ang tinutukin naman dito sa second rule natin is um, conjunction. Yung mga uh, other conjunction words. Um, when are joined by and or both or and, the verb is plural. So, ang conjunction natin na tinutukoy dyan is ang and or both or and. So, kapag ganyang mga salita na nagkoconnecta sa ating compound subject, so, ang gagamitin nating verb is plural. So, let's see some example for more understanding. This conjunction always suggests more than one. Since more than one is plural, the verb must be plural also. Whether the individual subject are singular, plural, or a combination of singular and plural. So, for example, the bread and the cheese are covered with mild. So, two things, the bread and the cheese. 
so are covered with mold, mild. Okay, so the verb must be plural to agree with both of them. So, kaya, ang verb natin is are. So, are is agree for both bread and cheese. Kasi, gumamit tayo ng conjunction na n. Kaya, ang, sub, or ang verb natin is plural. The are. So, are agrees with both bread and cheese. Okay. So, a second example is three tapes and a record were left at my house. So, even the record is singular, the verb is still plural because the record and the tapes together were left. Okay? So, hope you understand it. But there are two exceptions to the rule in the number two rule. Okay? Two subject the first rule is two subject joined by N. Occasional refer to only one person or one thing. In such a case, the verb must be a singular. So, tinutukoy dyan is kapag ang dalawang compound subject natin is uh, referred to as one thing or one um, person. So, our verb is must be a singular. For example, spaghetti and meatballs is the capital special to take. So, the spaghetti and the meatballs is considered one item food. Kaya, ang, aw, ang ating verb sa sentence na to is, is. Kasi, ang spaghetti at meatball, meatballs is um, referred to as one thing. Because they're one item of food. Okay? So, the second example is the author. An illustrator was given a special award. Okay, so author and illustrator refer to the same person. Kaya, ang subject, kaya ang verb natin is was, singular. Kasi, ang author and illustrator, illustrator is referred to as one person, the same person. Kaya, ang verb natin is um, singular. So, was agrees on the author and and illustrator because they are referred to as one thing or singular. Okay. The words every and each are the basis of the second exceptions. So, ito yun naman yung um, um, next exemption into the second rule. So, if one of these words comes before a compound subject that is joined by each or that is joined by N, each subject is being considered separately. As a result, the verb must be singular to agree with the singular subject. Okay, so, for example, every father and mother was invited to the open house. So, the word every, or the verb was, is agree on the singular verb na every. Kahit na dalawa yung compound, kahit na ang compound subject natin is ginamitan ng um, word n, so, doon tayo magpo-focus sa word before our compound subject na every. Okay. Every refers to a singular. Okay? So, was agrees on our subject because of the word every. Okay. So, the second one is each suitcase and trunks was packed. So, was agrees on the word each, not on the suitcase and trunk. Okay. Next one. 